We're back. Sorry, I forgot to turn on the break music. Uh, I don't know. It feels like the longer I stream, the worse I get at it. Just get more comfortable. That's how it is. We're back. Right? Yeah, we're back. Hey, everybody. So we were just we were just patting ourselves on the back for several awesome. rounds well fought. I mean, let's be honest. Mortric saved that last fight. <laughs> yeah, Mortric was our, our meat tank. He was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah more damage. Any one of us took it. Took uh, it. Our damage sink. That's what you are. <laughs> meat shield. Yeah, I know what that you're feels the, like. You're the hell protector. <laughs> <laughs> Look, somebody's got to do it. Oh, so, yeah. How much do we need to pay Al? How often do you want us to pay? Five, uh, five silver a day, right? Five silver a day. We I would look, pay. I would not say that I was a generous DM giving full plate. Uh, you guys literally died over and over again, and the town <laughs> shunned you away. Bacchusin isn't an idiot. He might not like you, but feel, felt like you guys should be rewarded for your efforts. It was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hal is okay with being paid every time you arrive at a major settlement. So, like okay. right now, uh, yeah. you owe him fifteen silver. Five days. Three days. How long did it take us to get here? Three days. Three days. Three days. You owe him fifteen silver. Uh, I have my key points back then. Yeah. Uh. So that fight was was on the second day in the afternoon. Uh, this is the third day at night. We cut to all of you arriving outside a seedy waterside tavern along the docks. Uh, it's just at the edge of the docks. You can see ships of many sizes and, and shapes. There's junks, uh, brigs, uh, even a dreadnought. Some have two, three, or even four sails. Some only span several heights tall. Others are dozens of feet tall with huge masts. Um, no, no, nothing like cannons or anything like that, but large ballista, uh, net throwers, even it looks like some sort of, uh, alchemical fire dispenser are, are all on every ship. Everyone seems to be armed here, nautically. The sailors look rough, but you get the idea that they're pretending to be more tough than they really are. It's the kind of town where you put on a front in order to show how badass you are in order to earn a spot on the crew. And your mercenary friend, Kaladin, is explaining this to you. It seems like it's not his first time in Pyre's Water. Uh, hipster pirates, the worst. Uh, so he says they're not, they're not strictly pirates here. They're mostly Like they're sailors. not strictly a bandit? Well, look. <laughs> bandit would be a very strong term. I'm a mercenary, soldier of fortune... Uh, that would be correct. Occasional bandit when I'm desperate. I was mm. very desperate. Right. Look, mate, you had to feed me on a trip here. That's how bad I am at. <laughs> that is true. So anyway, where are you taking us? Who are meeting? Well, you said you wanted to meet the head, so I'm taking you to the head. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You... So, I mean, Rick Jacks, you would know this terminology. He's taking you to the head of the local crime family. I really need to use the restroom, that's why. That's... <laughs> you want to the head. Head. Okay. So I'll, I'll relay back to the group. It's like, hey, this is what's going on. If you want to meet the, the head of the... What is it? The head of the guild? Yeah, it's the local thieves yeah. guild is, is a crime family. Yeah. Let's go talk to him and see what we can learn. But it's up to you guys. Uh, on the day of his daughter's wedding. So as you, it's interesting you mentioned that. Uh, as you approach this tavern, the sign out front says the river serpent, uh, which Rick Jacks you immediately recognize as being thieves code lingo for a pirate hangout. It's where specifically smugglers. Uh, smugglers are called river serpents. Cool, cool. I'm going to try to put on my best mean face. Uh, yeah. No, we have seen your intimidation rules. <laughs> you think it's good? It's not. No. <laughs> As does the same thing. <laughs> Underneath right. his armor. 
You rolled a seven. It's bad. It's real bad. You kind of look like you're constipated. <laughs> uh, when you enter, you see Kaladin flash a couple of hand signs real quick and then start heading towards a back room in the tavern. Inside the tavern, there's lots of sailcloth that's draping like curtains. Uh, some of them are on runners, so you can like section off your table for private conversation here. Uh, there's lots of nautical themed like buoys, uh, spars, broken wood. There's a figurehead above the bar uh, that used to belong on the front end of a ship. Inside are mostly not sailors. Inside, it's like your collection of experts, tradesmen, craftsmen, uh, rat catchers, problem solvers. You're seeing a lot of short swords and daggers, practical weapons you'd use over an average day. Hand axes. <clears throat> You're not seeing a lot of long swords and like outright armor. Cazador, uh, mm -hmm. you're attracting an enormous amount of attention. I mean, you're basically walking around with like an eighth of a castle worth of armor. <laughs> Someone could kill you and put a down payment on a small fortress. <laughs> Luckily, I'm very intimidating. Uh, show me how intimidating. Oh, you actually are very intimidating. <laughs> uh, you rolled an 18. You're pretty fucking intimidating. Uh, people are looking at you and calculating, like, you know, like if this guy fell into the water somewhere drunk, could we could we get away with it, right? Like, could we kill him? And the numbers are coming up. No, the numbers are coming up bad. Rick Jax, you're, you're strangely not that intimidating here. People are not surprised to see a deep gnome. Uh, not in this place. Perhaps in the, in the town, not in the Thieves' Guild. Mortric, somehow, wh how, what are you doing? What I'm are you doing? A clown, remember. <laughs> Have you even cleaned your clothing yet? Or are you still <laughs> no, covered in heart blood? Covered All right, blood. people are looking at the particular shade of the deep tint of the blood that's on your clothing and that it's unwashed and that you're walking around town like that and they're like this person is fucking insane <laughs> the guard the guard is gonna pick him up and and he's gonna kill them most of this is mine bitches overall your party is being treated warily but uh hal rick jacks uh <laughs> Runa are not being taken seriously. They're like, those three, easy mode. Other three, actual <laughs> badasses. Yeah, if you've seen one deep, deep gnome, you've seen them all. So I understand. After a few moments of your entry, uh, the music kicks back in. There is a man with an accordion in the corner that's singing. And when he gets back to a jaunty tune, um, some guy who's cranking a hurdy-gurdy in the corner begins plucking away at it and they do like a jaunty sailing tune which is strangely out of place given that the clientele all seem to be you know normal craftspeople i uh give a coin to the hurdy gurdy player what, what kind of coin the co uh, co uh, uh silver coin all right, silver so. coin uh yeah he's he's just, he like bites it to make sure it's real and he's like oh excuse me senor Thank Sorry? you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and I request like a dwarven song. Oh, you request a dwarven song. Um, yeah. All right. So yeah. this is like going up to Taylor Swift and uh, <laughs> asking her to do like an acoustic Metallica cover. But the two of them like switch it over and the singer with the accordion has surprisingly coherent dwarven. Uh, mostly it's cursing. And he begins to play, they begin, um, you know, again, it's using instruments that you wouldn't normally use to play this song, right? They, these are not dwarven instrumentation here, but they do a fairly passable cover of a dwarven drinking song uh, that is mostly about bashing in the skulls of your enemies with your cups. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, and yeah, also about right describing the qualities of alcohol in places other than dwarven lands, which is where all the cursing comes from. I'm going to turn to Rita and be like, no longer dwarves are so angry. Their music is awful. Yeah, but that's only because you can't hear the lyrics. You basically, there's so many movies that have done this where you just basically walk into like the mafia's room and like change the song to polka or something. <laughs> 
Uh, you know you how it is, get a drink. right? You always want to hear Shakespeare in the original Klingon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you go to the bar and get a drink. The bartender looks you up warily and uh, says, "No from around here, are you?" Nope, but neither is the beer. So can I have one? <laughs> so she, he laughs and says, "Okay, you need a room." Mm, possibly sets out a mug of cider in front of you and says that and a pot of roasted lentils will get you two copper pieces I hand over two copper pieces All right, the cider is not very good compared to the wonderful cider you just had from Apple Valley the lentils however are excellent as far as lentils go they definitely added some salt to this There's, there's spices you may have never tasted before Every part of the, like, the food here is surprisingly good, given the fact that it's a seedy backwater tavern. It's one of those holes in the walls. You don't expect it. Uh, so the, the bartender looks you up and says, <clears throat> Look, it's a port city. We bring in stuff from all over the place. You know? No, it's quite, quite delicious. <clears throat> Thank you. And I'll just eat my food. <laughs> After a few minutes, your uh, mercenary returns and says, he goes to Castor because he's afraid of everybody else. The father is waiting for you in the back room. I just want you to know to speak respectfully. He's a very important person. I don't know a lot about what you guys are doing, but it sounds like you need a ship. I, s- yeah. I asked around. Everyone is avoiding the seas to ha- to to havens. That's so. Flock of harpies and some lizard folks set up along the the strait. It's a whole week to go around, and it sounds like you guys need time. That's right. We're in a we're in a certain kind of hurry. So I spoke with the father, and he said. He'd be willing to negotiate. They have several ships, including a very fast one. And they'd be willing to brave the straits if you would solve a small job for him in town. Hmm. Nothing that that would get you into too much trouble. Just a little roughing up. Now, if you give me my letter of mark back, we'll we'll go our different ways. Okay. I give him his letter back. All right. He disappears out of the tavern. Wait, I want to pat him on the shoulder and be like, it's been great working with you. He what, does your, not want you touching your him. Name? <laughs> I don't so remember your name. He, he like steps back. He says, the name's Culloden. All right, Culloden. I'm not going to remember that, but it was great to meet you. He disappears out the tavern, perhaps never to be seen by you again. Perhaps. Uh, he's going to be my character when Mortric dies. So there's a lot of um, <laughs> different variation in clothing here, but you know, it's mostly like towny cloth, some, some cotton. Someone wearing silks in what we would consider pirates. So not what an actual pirate would wear, but someone from our day that's, you know, like Long Zhong Silver or the guy in the front of a rum bottle, would, what we would think of as pirate. Again, not like what a pirate would actually be dressed like. Uh, he's got a head bandana. He's got a huge sash. He's got a giant cutlass tucked into that it. sash. He, everything about him screams, Aha, I'm, I'm a badass. It There's a lot of different colors here. Kind of looks like someone puked up a color palette on him. Uh, purple, fuchsia, maroon, even some imperial green. His pantaloons are uh, like... Vaguely stained yellowish. Um, where did he come out of? Come he out is of coming back? out of out of a curtained back room and says, "The father will see you now." All right. Well, I guess we'll follow the peacock. Huh? More trick. Let's go. I'll pound my drink. How did you know that that was my nickname? <laughs> <laughs> Who told you this? He's got a sixth sense about these things. <sighs> True. Keeps all his information. Have you heard of me from outside the town? Do uh, they know about the tales of the peacock? Should we have heard of you? Uh, uh, I want to hear your version. Some have said that I am the third best duelist in all of Pyros Water. 
I am on the official ranking. I have beat several of the heroes. That's so. Ah. Hmm. It is um, indeed so. Can't say I've heard of you. I'm sorry. That is yeah, well. You've heard of me now, and you can spread my legend everywhere. Tell everyone. What's the peacock. It is the peacock. Oh, okay. If I remember, I will tell someone. Say my name back to me. We're like, hey, have you heard of this guy called the peacock? You have done it. <laughs> uh, so he um, leads you down this hallway and then very obviously opens a secret door and says, in here, the father is waiting. Inside, you can hear someone playing a violin thinly. All right. Um, Ken's gonna is gonna look around the room just to see. I mean, as you're going in, it's tough. Like you're wider than the door is with your plate armor. You sidestep. You gotta sidestep in. It's crowded in here with the four of you plus Hal. I mean, there there's not a lot of room to begin with, and now with all of you armed and armored and inside, you're gonna need to lose some weight. I mean, when you say that, the man behind the desk says, "You want me to lose some weight." It's he's not like super obese, but he's got a belly on him. Uh, he's wearing a once fine coat that's clearly been worn for too long. Uh, but other than that, you know, his shirt screams money. Uh, very finely tailored, fits him perfectly, unlike the coat. Uh, the desk looks like it's made out of some very nice solid wood. There's affectations all across the office, mostly tinted in gold. And there's a guy playing a violin in the corner and who you presume the father is goes leave me i want to be alone with my associates make sure no one disturbs us and the violin player is just like nods and like steps on something and you hear a clicking noise and like a panel opens and he steps through the panel and once he goes through it closes again and then... so i hear from my friends in the crimson stone breakers that you are elusive psychopaths, killers, bone breakers, slayers. I think that is a pretty accurate description. And we hear you have a problem that we could take care of. I in do. In exchange for a boat ride. You may call me the father, but no, pops. I am known oh, as Timmer Anacona. And this establishment is the centerpiece of the Anacona business conglomerate. We own roughly 30% of all the businesses in the town. Now I have a, a young son named Greco Anacona. He's been getting involved with a girl from across town. I have a problem with their organization. They're like an adventurer's guild that only accepts truly heroic individuals, paladins, good clerics, occasionally a fighter, druids, disgusting people. They look down on the rest of us because we try to earn money in ways that they can't imagine. They want to follow laws that don't make any sense. They want to shackle us. They are bad people. No matter how good they think they are. And they answer to the Padua family. There's a young woman, Leah Padua. My son appears to have some affectation for her. This is a problem for me. This is a serious problem, do you understand? My son Greco cannot be hanging around this Leah woman. They cannot be allowed to get any closer. Now. My son has had a young woman in his life for some time by the name of Mal Kerblin. I would like him to marry her. She's a good girl. She grew up on the docks. She doesn't have any affectations. She doesn't pretend to be something more than she is. So here's what I want you to do. My son knows my men. He grew up around my men. They're all uncles and aunties to him. I need someone from out of town. Go rough him up. Let him know that the Padua family doesn't want to see him around. I want you to be extremely clear to pretend to be part of this adventuring guild of heroes and to go after my son and just beat him up a little bit. Let him know that the Padua's don't want to see him around the daughter. 
We need to cause some tension between them. You understand what I'm saying? I don't want you to kill my son. I don't want you to permanently injure my son. I want you to convince my son that the people that he is attempting to fornicate with hate him and that he needs to come back to the family. Can you play the villain for me? Is this something that you can do? Because I understand that you need to go places and do things. And for this small task, I would be willing to give you great rewards. One of my ships at your disposal for a two week journey to Havens through some very dangerous waters. An all expense paid trip. I've noticed no one's talking. Um, I understand that with you people, you need to talk amongst yourselves for a little while. But this room isn't that big. So I'll just pretend like I'm not listening in. <clears throat> so he pulls out a pipe and then lights it and starts taking a deep huff. And then like has a glass of kind of amberish alcohol and takes a sip from it. And it's like, that's the good stuff right there. This is what life is about, gentlemen. I'm sorry, can I offer you all anything? I forgot to get refreshments. Yeah, I'll take one of those, please. <laughs> so <laughs> he reaches under his desk and pulls out like a uh, like a party pipe, you know, for like eight people. <laughs> you know, like a war bong or something like that. <laughs> and he starts packing in some, some herb into it and uh, setting out glasses for anybody that wants anything. And he's like, Go ahead, talk amongst yourselves. Look, if you need to say things like criminal or thief or killer, that's fine here. I know what I am. I, I know mean, what I am. We don't really need to talk about it, though, do we, guys? We know we're going to take Are you in back. agreement with this, then? You feel like this is a job that you are uniquely talented at, that you can I pull mean, off pretending to be good it? guys beating no. down the bad guys? It's a very uncomfortable job. I don't agree with you. I think you're a terrible person, but I need your boat more than I need my morals right now, so... I can respect both your morals and your lack of morals here, even if I don't agree with either of them. Um, where is your son now? I've got my man following my son. I believe he's trying to pretend like he's capable of sneaking away, but he's spending time with the girl. Mm -hmm. It's getting late. The girl though. now? I believe so. Hmm. You can get this done tonight if you catch him on the way back. As he's coming back to the River Serpent, you drag him into an alleyway and let him know the Paduas send their regards. Stop when, dating uh, the daughter. And when does the ship leave? For Havens. The ship leaves when the job is done. Hmm. As I said, what I'm willing to reward you back. mightily for your competence here. They'll take it. Yeah, I think, yeah. Kaz is nodding his head. He's, he's sort of saying, okay, this isn't too bad. The father turns toward Rickjax, who's the only one who hasn't affirmed yet. Do you have some problem with this arrangement? Well, it goes against my nature, believe it or not, but we we are on a mission and we need to get going. So yes, I will follow the group. No, no, I'm curious about this. <clears throat> I don't want my son to fall in with bad people. Um, what time in the afternoon, by the way? Is it? Family reunion it, it's the sun is down, so it's night. It's already night. Okay. Yep. And yeah, look. I know you're looking down on my organization, but it's not like we go out and kill people on a regular basis. You know how these adventurers are? They think they're so high and mighty, and they show up covered in blood everywhere. They have no manners. They have no respect. <laughs> they always talk about law, society, and justice. Where's the justice when someone is losing their business, and all they need is a little bit of money? I can offer that money to them. But they want to talk about usury. They want to talk about loan rates. They want to talk about banking. People don't need banking. They don't need loan rates. What they need is money now to save their business. Because that fish harvest didn't come in for the last two weeks. And they need something to feed their families with and to send their men back out to look for those fish. Yes, yeah, so you can't fish with a broken arm, though, can you? 
Well, I feel like I've been very attacked here. Yeah, I would never we, break the man's uh, arm. We're trying to don't mind him. Business arrangement. Does that sometimes we don't. We're used to it. Other people aren't. Kaz, we'll take the job. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, uh, it sounded like I was talking to adventurers for a second. So, strangely, <laughs> the only one that, that doesn't sound like a, a moralistic hero is Runa, <laughs> who I normally would feel is the centerpiece of the party. <laughs> whether she actually agrees with this or whether she's just smoothing she things over is unclear. She's not, but as far as a crime syndicate goes and the amount of shady stuff that they do, roughing up one of the people that they is in their syndicate doesn't seem... This is literally this guy's actual blood son. Yeah. 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 yeah this isn't that bad. I do... Kaz is interested in checking out this Adventurer's Guild, though, and okay. seeing what they're all about. Um, but that we can't say that right now, so <laughs> of course. <clears throat> so right. sounds like we're all in. Well then, please feel free to take the drinks with you. And he like takes this takes a couple pinches of the herb and puts it in a bag and says, For your troubles, take it with you. <clears throat> Alright. Cass takes it. I feel like it has strong undertones of cedar. <laughs> Yeah, it smells it. <laughs> I'll take the drink. <laughs> the drink is good. Yeah. I mean, it's very, it's very peaty, you know. Much better than that cider I just drank. Oh yeah, absolutely. He brought out the top shelf stuff, you know. Nice. You exit from uh, the same secret door you entered in and head back out into the bar. Uh, you, there's a table set aside for you. Uh, the bartender's like gesturing you all to come over. They've got like hot, thick soups for you, uh, almost like a mini stew, uh, fresh bread, and some nice steaks. Big cuts of meat. I mean, we're talking like maybe two inches thick. Kind of looks like, kind of looks like some sort of uh, big fish. Very big fish, extra thick with double C's. <laughs> you did well in there Hal I'm glad you didn't mess us up so so Hal's just like oh I, I, I try not to say anything uh, just yeah. following along <laughs> yes that's exactly <laughs> what we needed in there alright well I think fellas for this, for this task we don't need too many of us so unless his son has an armed guard of any kind which presumably would be this People fellow's men. Us. Yeah, they're gonna stand aside, but he can't. He can't know that his own father is doing this. So we may have to attack them too a little bit. Yeah, no, we're definitely gonna have to rough them up. First thing we need to do though is get a couple of disguises because when we bug out of town, we need to bring the son and his girlfriend with us. We can't leave them here. But I, I think Rick Jacks might be very useful in this. Oh, let me clear. Real quick, more trick. Are you openly discussing betraying this guy in the tavern where all of his men are also eating? But like very quietly to the group. Okay, all right. I get it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, just gonna make a note here, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rick Jacks. I think you could probably sneak up behind this fella and grab him into an alleyway uh, without them knowing. And we could we could blackjack him, and and that way you can cover your. Well, face. is he coming back? He's coming back from a tryst with his girlfriend. He may not have guards with him. He may not, but we have to account for the possibility that he might. That's I true. It, I think it's a good plan if I can uh, find a place to hide along the way. Um, yeah. How, uh, can, so my question for the town is is like he's how he's how men were trailing him, so not exactly next to him. Yeah, you're gonna have to pull this one off, Rick Jacks. This is gonna be a heist, like a kidnap heist. So That's fine. maybe, maybe we'll have some lookouts, and and maybe yeah. we'll have we'll be able to distract the guards. Rick Mortrick, I'd say I volunteer you for that task. It seems has, like something I could do. So how big is um, how big is the like this town? Like how many alleyways? Like how how intricate are the the networks of roads? Interesting. Great question. So, like, how easily right can here. a person escape? 
So Splendid. the town has about 1,600 people. It's got a mixed human dwarf population. Uh, the only place of note appears to be a large pottery factory. Uh, it's the only multi-story building in the entire town. There are roads, if you could call it that. They're kind of just dirt paths that occasionally have reinforcement to allow wagons through. There's a lot of space near the docks for warehouses, or in some cases, it's literally just like a cloth tarp cover uh, to provide like rain cover, and then goods are stacked down there. Mm -hmm. So basically completely in the open. Off the docks immediately, again, there's a lot of space. Uh, this time, good, hard, you know, solid bedrock for people to set up stands in the morning, you know, pull the goods off the warehouse, sell them uh, to people traveling through. The town is cut by a river that runs through the center of it. So there's a lot of small bridges that cross to the other side of town and it becomes very obvious how the town got divided between, you know, the crime family and the hero family. Uh, the hero side appears to be considerably more well kept, but with much fewer people. Uh, the housing is better. There are less people walking in the streets, but there are simply just less people in general. Uh, whereas on the, the south side of town, there's lots of large housing areas. Not like apartments, because that's not a thing, but like houses that would hold 10 or 20 people, like a full family. Here, it's mostly like a small but nice house for one to two people, like cottages. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the businesses on the north side of town seem to be more um, benign in nature. There is a much fewer craftsmen and many more like pottery related things. Lots of kind of arts work. You almost get the idea that people are putting on airs on the north side of town. Like when people come, they don't want them to see the south side of town as being pyre's water. Mm hmm. Right, they're embarrassed by the yes they're they're embarrassed the by those fellows across the river yeah <laughs> any other questions um are the markets like sort of opened i want to there I, I is suggest... there is a night market going on it is greatly reduced you expect from what the day market would look like but there yeah. are people selling fish at all times of night Mm -hmm. uh, there are people that are unloading goods from the ships uh, and people who are loading wagons with the goods and heading off north or south. Are there any stands with clothing? Yes, there are several stands with clothing. Uh, when you approach, uh, someone comes out, uh, a kind of young woman, maybe in her late teens, uh, who sees you, Runa, and is just like, oh, c come with me to the aunties. Come with me. We'll get you something very nice. So I'm going to suggest, we, like, sort of maybe when we were still in the bar, um, maybe we grab a few nets and fish nets and rickjacks. You can use that to grab him. It might be helpful anyway. I suggest we bring some along. So, Runa, you're being dragged away from the, like, cloth section and more towards the silks and pure whites, uh robes upstanding citizen stalls and she's just like you you come with me now we'll find you something very matching your level of wealth and taste um i, I don't think that'll be quite necessary uh so maybe something practical but so when you say that a guy appears from out of the shadows and is like get your hands off of her bar fight <laughs> so these two fixers from different parts of town you know one's from the north craftsman uh pottery side and the other's from the south dock side are mm -hmm. fighting over who gets to take you to the stalls and he's like come on now she said she wants something practical look at her she's a traveler and she's like that's an adventurer Adventurers require very specific clothing that you can get stains out of that travel well, strong fabrics. Absolutely, you were talking my language. Can you see this? She I wraps her been... arm in your arm, takes you by the elbow and is like, why don't you have your whole party come with me? And away from the stalls that will be less elegant for you. You know, between you and me, 
I don't think they have the refinement to appreciate your wares like I do. We better just leave them. Are They're you sure? The I feel like perhaps you could class their style up. I mean, I've tried. I have tried. You have no idea. And yet, here we are. She can sense a losing battle. She's got more trick on the hook. She's willing to take it. She drags you away to another set of stalls where you can look at very nice clothing. The rest of you are left with this kind of seedy looking man who's now waving his hands around like, <laughs> gotcha, bitch. You're mine now. All right. So, what do you guys think in terms of clothing? Well, guys going to be looking around for fishnets. So when you're like fishnets, he's like, we got, we got the nets. You we want got the to leg fishnets? They're really nice. You can put them on your arm. No, he, no, he knows exactly what you mean. He's like, my uncle is a fisherman. I'll get you, I'll get you exactly what you need. Strong, light, durable. The the last. You looking for tight weave or you looking for wide weave? Hey, before you say, I, I want to tell Casador. I go, hey, the the. Mm -hmm. The net idea is okay, but I honestly don't want the nets tying me down because I need to be able to move in and out of the shadows quickly. We can okay. get you lightweight yeah. nets. Very light. Very good. What size fish are you looking to catch? Large fish. Okay, so you want <laughs> you want wide nets. Yeah. Big yeah, holes. That's what we want. Okay. All I right. Want, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try and buy two of them. I don't know if I can add that to my pack in general. And Rick Jacks, you're welcome to one, obviously, if you want. You don't want uh, it. So nets are going to cost a gold apiece. Gonna, each one. Uh, it's a lot gold? of rope. I mean, this you guys you guys fish all the time. Uh, He's like, these are quality I, nets. Can't find stuff like this on the north side of town. Look, maybe I'll... Maybe I'll take one. I don't know. I mean... Go look, 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 look. We don't have to settle this now, okay? I'll tell you what. Mm -hmm. Let's get everything you need together, and maybe start, we can talk a discount. Yeah, I start pulling apart the net, like trying to grab it, and like sort of. Like, it's a good how net. It is. Yeah. This is the kind of net you would want to catch, you know, like a shark or a yeah. large fish. Yeah, or a person. Forget, no one would ever say that. I have. <laughs> I don't know how much code I have? I have to check. Um, roll twenty, I guess. So you guys go ahead, and I'm going to check that. You're a muted bearded. I want your entire stock. Oh, I got to look at my coin purse. <laughs> I mean, look, that's happened to me in real life. <laughs> <laughs> so while while they're checking money and stuff, did do we know the path that the sun is going to be coming back? Yeah, you have a general idea of what bridge is going to cross the the way back, like. There's a main road that runs from the River Serpent out to uh, that. You don't know what the name of the Hero Tavern is, but where all of the adventurers congregate. Yeah. Okay. I you just I just want to really be clear here. Is is Mortrix's plan to abscond these two young lovers away <laughs> on the ship with you? The new plan is that. Is that for real? Like, that's super interesting to me. That is the most Romeo and Juliet, but they actually live at the end ending that you could possibly have. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's definitely where he's thinking, but he hasn't fleshed it out completely. So it would be not, tough to flesh out. <laughs> he hasn't brought it to the group yet. Yeah. He kind of, he softballed it earlier. But it's still, yeah, we got to get on the road for that kind of discussion, though. Kaz was uncomfortable with that. We had to walk, get out of the tavern quick um, before we talked about undermining the father's plans. Yeah, that's that's two guilds potentially <laughs> chasing our tail. Yeah. Uh, well, we're not actually in the same spot right now, are we? Like, I'm still shopping. You're, the yeah, you're away from the yeah. party because you're, yeah. getting, you're getting shopped. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm waiting for Kaz to do his business because I'm I'm ready to go scout a location, see where I can hide best. Okay, uh, Kaz, let's talk about stuff you're buying, clothing, yeah, anything I like that. Don't, I don't see where I can see how much gold I have. Uh, I well, you should have started with like 15 gold pieces. Okay, 
Uh, so write that down somewhere, possibly. Yeah, write it down. Yeah. Then the next question is, you know, like I, sp I spent like I spent so far a few silver. I like, know that Mortric has been handing money out to people. I just don't know how much. Yeah, I just I have it the gold the silver total from that stash we found. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, two two uh, hmm. one gold. What how about how about one gold and two silver? How about one and five? Deal. Okay. Yeah, I mean, two nets for one and five. Yeah. All right. So now it's thirteen point five. He's just like oh. yes. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's pretty expensive, but at the same time, I mean no, that's actually a great price. It's just you don't get the idea that they normally sell nets to other people on a normal basis. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Right. These are mostly things that fishermen would use, and they know all the fishermen. Mm -hmm. Mortric, the prices you're seeing are fairly expensive here. She's taking you around. It's not like they have tailored suits ready to go. Uh, but everything is like 10 gold pieces for one set of full clothing. And yeah. it's kind of, she's taking you to stuff that would be traditionally heroic clothing. Uh, you know, fine yeah, right. leather pants, some like silk shirts, lots of accoutrements, uh, starbursts, sun symbols, sword yeah. symbols, mailed so, like, fists. I don't actually plan on buying anything. Uh, I'm just gonna be that guy that like tries on everything and like I'm just bullshitting her the whole time while I'm we get a lot of more trick without his shirt on. I, I'm with them, right? Yeah, you're you're with yeah. Team Dockside. <clears throat> you don't have I to see more trick with the shirt. I definitely off. like a lot of the sun motifs. Uh, I just want something that's durable and I can use on the road. Nothing that's really flimsy and whimsical. Okay. All right, you can get clothing uh, for, you can get like five sets of clothing for like four silver pieces. Yeah, uh, I'll do that. I'll make one of them like a, a nicer, fancier flowing dress type of deal. All right, the rest are, you know, mostly like loose shirts and like rugged, durable pants. Mm -hmm. More trick. This chick is really trying to sell you on buying something, anything. Especially when she's like looking at your sword holster and she's just like, Oh, no, 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 no. This Epe deserves a much <laughs> finer carrying case than this. Look at all of this blood. You know I mean, how hard that is to get out of clothing? Cool. Let me tell you about blood and silk. These silks have been oh, specially lady, alchemically you don't need reinforced. To tell me anything. I know all about it. Blood is shed like water the from these happens. things. You are a discerning gentleman. And I can see you're trying on a lot of things. I feel like if you tell me what it is you're looking for, we can really zero in and just deliver what you need for you. She, there's lots of hands, especially on your like pecs and abs. She's like <laughs> helping you get the clothing on. And we're like, ooh, why thank you. Thank you so much. It's just part of the <clears throat> service we offer when we're trying to put you in contact with what you need. All right, so just be clear, you're like stripping your shirt on and off constantly in yeah, the middle of a night bazaar. Constantly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> working it through, working it through. So Kaz is going to express an interest at some point with more trick and Runa. Like, I think we should check out what's going on with this Ventures Guild, and I think we can use the fact that we just slaughtered a Minotaur to our advantage. What's your play though? What, what, yeah. why do you want to We're gonna walk in, brag that we just slaughtered this minotaur that's been plaguing the area. Why do they care? Well, we're close. We're close by. Surely, like, they were relate, like, they knew about this minotaur. Ooh, we could, like, use it, you know, as, like, part of our application process. Yeah, we want to kind of get acquainted with, I mean, we are adventurers after all, and it doesn't seem like. But we've we've accepted. Uh, let me just tell you, we, we've accepted a contract from the thieves guild to perform a mission. So how does that support the mission? You it know, have and to. I, Rick Jacks, I'm going to have to apologize because I undervalued um, how important this connection is to you. So how attached are you to this thieves guild? 
it's not that I'm attached to the Thieves Guild, is that if this Thieves Guild has any power at all and we don't do the mission, then uh, we could be asking for a lot of trouble. We are stepping into a situation where we could be on the bad end of either side of this conflict. We I'd rather just care. do the job and leave. Hmm. Are you sure you just want to do the job and leave? I mean, like, I feel really bad for this couple. You know, they're both victims of circumstance. We have a tailor-made opportunity to get them across the sea and far away to a new place where they can build a beautiful life together and probably make a lot of babies. So Hal chimes in and is just like, I wouldn't normally interfere in your discussions, you understand? I find myself strangely attracted to Mortrick's idea. For him to be the bastion of reason in the party is... <laughs> I'm beginning to sense is unusual, but there is one problem with your plan. The ship that you want to smuggle this young couple on is going to be crewed by members of the Thieves Guild. Right. So we're not getting them on the ship. We need to get people to think they're on the ship so that they don't notice them leaving in our wagon with you back for Apple Valley. So you want me to go back to Apple Valley with the two of them? Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. It I don't seems know. like you could introduce yeah. them as, I don't know, long lost relatives or something. Well, and incur the wrath of the Thieves Guild. The grandkids did move out. There you go. You got a couple of grandkids now. But that leaves you explaining to the Thieves Guild members on the ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the still working are. on that part of it. I think I have the beginnings of an idea but we kind of need to figure out the mechanics of it first. Well, let me ask a question. What if the Adventurer's Guild has a ship? Well, and that is one of the, a, a good reason to go check in the, with the Adventurer's Guild. So like I am on board with Kaz on that. But, you know, I've read a lot and in these situations, no side is entirely without blame. So I don't want to put all our eggs in the Adventure Guild's basket just in case. How much time do we have before well, we think the sun's going to be coming up so that the Oh, Avengers I mean, it's only been like an hour since sunset. It's going to be a long time. The crime family has arranged for them to abscond okay. on an Adventures Guild ship. The Adventure Guild thinks they're absconding on a crime guild ship, but Hal has taken them back to Apple Valley. Hal is, Hal is just like, this plane is so complicated. Any part <laughs> of it could I, fail. That's, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yes. We're this not doing... <laughs> And I believe you've seen too many plays, young man. And maybe, and maybe a broken bone. That's it. Then we can leave. I mean, it's not, it's not perfect yet. It's got a couple of kinks, but, you know, I feel like together as a team, we can get this worked out. I think we're either, we're either coming with us or we're breaking some, breaking the face in. That's. What? I think we're roughing up. We're not breaking yeah, anything. We're rough. He said not breaking anything. We're not killing him. Right. Yeah, I just want to make that clear. No, no killers. No way. I know Casador's got that action surge thing going on. He wants to break some more heads. <laughs> yeah, no, this kid yeah. is, is screwed because, I mean, either way, we got to have proof we did something. So this kid's got to take a couple for the team. Yeah. I, I'm sure we can damage him up without really hurting him. You got that, Kaz? You can hurt him, but you can't kill him. Look, my plate mail fists aren't going anywhere near his face anyway, so <laughs> this is this is on you. what you guys are doing. We don't need... I'm just saying, like, you seem to overreact in combat situations when someone's already down, okay? And I don't want a repeat of... Hal is situations. staring at Mortric. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. still say we we take a look at the Avengers Guild and just have a look. And yeah, I'm not no. saying that we were we're betraying the father. I'm just saying we we're not betraying. We, the we need to know the lie of the land. What if the Avengers Guild is in favor of this union, and we're stepping on their toes? No, I definitely think Guild is going to ruin us. I'm just saying we should have an idea of what you know our options are going in, and how we can use their help or come up with something completely different or whatever. And, and Okay, so I'm not against any plans, but since we're talking all alternatives, I mean, how are we going to, what, what's, what's the goal of walking into the hero's domain 
the thieves guild is surely going to have spies i'm sure they're watching us even as we speak now right so you're not going into the thieves guild with or the heroes guild with us rick jacks because one they probably would recognize you for what you are which is not a deep dome kaz i know you were thinking it but not everyone's racist like you they're gonna know you're a guild member so when he's you classist you they're classist they'll identify him as a rogue <laughs> my god <laughs> <laughs> Rick Jacks, you're going to need to cover for us with the Thieves Guild. We're just in looking for, you know, more information. We're scouting out the lie of the land, what we might encounter while we pull off this job. What do you think, Runa? There is some validity to walking into the Heroes Guild. We need to play this very, very carefully, or we could be on the wrong side of both of them. Yes, I yeah, agree. Yeah. I agree with It's not ideal. Hopefully, they think each other are responsible for whatever happens, and no one knows about Apple Valley. Yeah, I do think, uh, Mortric, you're going to need to play this a little more carefully, a little more close to the chest than I think you normally seem I to I think play. we're overthinking it. We could just do this job and leave. What are you trying to say, Kaz? That's hurtful. It's very hurtful. Well, let's go check out the Heroes Guild. <laughs> you say that's hurtful, but I bet you that wasn't nearly as hurtful as that Minotaur's, you know, horn through the gut. <laughs> did, uh, would not believe. <laughs> did the Thieves Guild go over kind of the route his son would be taking, or are we getting information fed to us at a later time? Uh, yeah, they gave, they gave you the route. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just want to ask real quick: Has anyone seen the movie Yojimbo, the samurai yeah, yes. film? All right. Yeah. Okay. Just to make clear that there are two endings to that movie. One is one where he's very successfully plays off both sides, and the other <laughs> is where he fucks up and both sides kill him, uh, yeah. and use him as a uh, indicator to all future people to not fuck with the town. Right. I, okay. I have not seen That's a great movie. I would rather not. Yojimbo is fantastic. Oh yeah. my goodness. I really like Hidden Fortress. I have not yeah. seen that. <clears throat> oh, I've seen so good. Yojimbo, well, Sinjuro. Like classic sort of small scale, you know, adventure cowboy. It's like a mixture yeah. between cowboys and, and like samurai. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and uh, the man without the name, that Clint Eastwood trilogy is all based off of samurai movies. Mm, Literally okay. just straight up ripped. Uh, yeah, Toshiro Mifune. Let's, let's talk about what the plan is from here. Oh, gosh, I thought that was poison. I didn't realize it was blood. Yeah. <laughs> damn it looks so much more badass now yeah sweet i'm loving these right dark tones too. especially the blue kind of going with that gray skin it's, it's an awesome awesome image who, who is it uh it's meant it's meant to be uh rick Dex. <laughs> yeah i thought it was rick Dex too <laughs> yeah i thought it was i rick. know i know i know yeah, it's awesome it looks awesome man thank you yeah mm -hmm. all right runa I, i'm kind of thinking maybe this is split mission you and i seem to be more uh in sync so I propose that we uh, we jump the sun and let these guys have their adventure in the Heroes Guild. I would like to take the lay of the land of our route to his son. So yeah, when is it, like when is this supposed to go down? Like it's how not much? super clear. It's when he gets done drinking and flirting. Okay, mm -hmm. so just sometime later tonight. It could it also, could be guys, a while. You know. I do want to say if it turns out this kid is a total shit heel, I'm totally on board with just beating his ass and getting out of town. <laughs> 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 oh my God, you just create your own scenarios. <laughs> Okay, so the consensus of the group is we do the lay of the land. All right. That was the three to one vote. Let's do it. You take the walk yeah. between the two taverns. As you cross the bridge, it it is like light and day. Over here, there are street lamps powered by magical light. Uh, everything is still bright, uh, clean, washed. The, the roads are made out of... I don't want to say like stonework, but they're definitely reinforced uh, to handle constant travel and they're clean. You're not seeing people leaving stuff on their front areas. You're not seeing garbage left out. Uh, there's a watch that consists of more than just rough looking men making sure there's no fights. Uh, there's a guard captain going around in uniform with deadly weapons, just like checking in on people helping an old lady get into her house at night and just like, oh there, travelers, kind of nausea you to let you know that he's seen you 
and is keeping an eye on you. Oh, there, guard. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> yep. That's what he needs said. some help. You seem <laughs> lost. The Adventurers Guild. Yes, the Adventurers Guild. You do seem like the types. Just yeah, keep following just... the road down there. About five, ten minutes walk, depending All on right. how fast you go. Some of you seem a little smaller. I suspect your strides might Dude, be shorter. Dude, he's right here. Come on. Don't be like that. Are you racist? <laughs> Are you talking about us, our size as being too diminutive? You're not there. It's Yeah, this is just me and Kaz. No. Okay, wait. I thought... I thought the whole party was going. Yeah, I thought oh. that was... No, I thought they were going to check out the... I thought we were going to check out the area that we're going to possibly abduct this kid at. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's what so I thought. I, is that the whole party was going along this road and like looking at the area? Uh, no, I thought Kaz and I were going to the Adventurers Guild while the other two went. Okay. The, the two, I think the two things are on the same path right now. And sure. then once we get to the actual okay. entrance, we'll, we'll okay. separate. Uh, so you're. Let, let's gotcha. put it this way: half the party is looking for an area to specifically ambush the kid at. Yeah. Yes. All right. As you're on this side, you're talking to a guard. You get the idea that it's probably going to be way easier on the south side of town. That's uh, right. It's yeah. dark. There's no outright guards. There's just tough looking guys hanging out at street corners, making sure that the kids aren't stealing stuff from stalls and no one's burning down the town. So, right, yeah, so the guard is kind of in helping you all along. Uh, I mean, he, he's just like, I'm not attempting to offend your races, but there is there is a measure of stride length. I mean, <laughs> one simply has the length of their yeah, legs. You don't have to call attention to it, all right? He's already sensitive. Have you seen his hairline? Don't bring it I up. I don't understand why he'd be sensitive to something that simply is him. I don't know. They're dwarves, man. Who knows what they think? I'll take your measure soon enough if you keep on talking like this. He turns towards you and puts a hand on his sword belt and says, I'm sorry, what did you just say to me? <laughs> just saying, there's no need for this kind of misconduct. Racist behavior can should not be... Accepted. If you'd like to register a complaint, you could speak to my boss. I could. Oh, but if you wish to take my measure, sir, I have a jail cell that you can spend the night in. All right, all right. I think this is getting out of hand, guys. I, I, I don't know how this happened, but I feel like I need to step in and defuse the situation. We are sorry, Kaz. Tell the man you're sorry, and can you just kindly escort us on our be way? Sorry for anything over here. He's all right. I'll say sorry on. for him. I'll say sorry for him. It's fine. He's sorry. I'm sorry. And I apologize as well that you took offense from my words. I did not intend offense only to give you an accurate measure of time to which, which you might arrive. Yes, and it <laughs> is appreciated. So let's just be ab be on our way. That's all right. So just for clarity for my brain, okay. Uh, is Runa and I, are we on the dark side of town, the south side of town? Yes. I, I feel like sure, right? from this conversation, you are breaking off and heading back to the other side of town to set up an ambush point. Okay. Very good. I would like one of you to make a survival check at advantage with help from the other. To locate uh, a location where you could grab this guy, get him in an alleyway, and beat him up. I'll do it. Okay. <clears throat> I got good survival. Okay. Just don't more trick this. <laughs> Natural 20. Mm. You ruined the shit out of it. <laughs> We're making that a thing now. Yeah. I mean, look, there's this bend in the road between three buildings yeah. it's a blind corner there's like a little reflection coming off of one of the glass windows you can see people approaching right as this guy's about to go around the corner you could snatch him and bring him around no one will know shit you can get him in the net and just start beating the crap out of him you might even get him before the people who are supposed to be guarding him even notice perfect uh, Kazador and yes. Mortric, you mm -hmm. make your way to the Adventurers Guild. Uh, a doorman lets you in after looking at your equipment and determining you do indeed seem to be adventure worthy. And as you come in, you hear lots of of talking. People are getting drunk. You hear something about Lady Gifu. There's word of the Badlands. Someone is talking about being transformed into a goblin. And in a corner. 
it it must be fucking insane to the to the two of you it's so obvious that this is the guy you're looking for everything mm -hmm. about him screams son of of a crime family <laughs> and everyone else seems to accept him as like a mysterious adventurer you're like did they just all fail their perception checks like are they fucking crazy <laughs> he's in the corner he's ruggedly handsome built he's got nice clothing on but kind of still seems a little greasy you know he's got kind of the villainous goatee going on the young woman he's speaking with is a beautiful late teens girl a little bit younger than him kind of dark mediterranean skin lustrous black hair a very nicely fitted dress and he's just like my love you are like the strawberry moon shining its crimson light down upon all of us i love you as much as i love the sea and she's just like that's so sweet <laughs> people are like cheering them on like this, this place is fucking insane for the two of them 100 percent supportive of their relationship <laughs> do i i want to insight check this guy and like do i feel like he is genuine or is this just like all right make the inside fun. check one 12. 12. <laughs> all right quick insight you're fairly certain no one here knows who this kid is they think he's just some regular ass adventurer uh who's laying down some pretty good moves he seems genuine ish you know it can be hard to tell with those kind of mortric type characters you're never sure how deep-seated their sociopath is but yeah he, you know does he, he look like he would kill a dog no he doesn't he does look like he can talk a pretty good game he so might be a heartbreaker but i'm gonna say Cass. i need to borrow one of your coins one of my coins? Yeah, I need to buy. You can't ever. You can't use your own coin. They're biased. I need to borrow one of your coins. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I, I'm still not sure why you need my coin, but fine. I flip my coin. I All right. Buy. I'm gonna flip the coin. Heads, I believe them. Tails, I don't. Okay. Well, no. Let's be clear here. Whatever you decide as yourself, I've told you what your character interprets what you believe is what you believe right 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 so like i'm not sure how i want to fall on this decision so i'm going to flip the coin. all right you're going to let the power of fate decide let's look at yeah. that algorithm i'm thinking it's going to be a one and one is heads yeah sure okay okay so you can roll on 1d2 i was just going to ask okay you can roll a 37 sided die you can roll whatever the hell you want all right, all right, that's I was completely two. wrong. Tails. All right, I'm gonna hand it back to Chasm. Like we need to get those two out of here because they deserve a chance. Um. Uh, well, Kaz is gonna take the measure of the room and um, going to. As you look around the room, someone is posting a notice on the board wall where a number of quests have been posted. They are hammering up a very poorly drawn minotaur uh and it says wanted four to six adventurers to hunt down a skeletal minotaur loosed from a necromancer's lair return intact or destroyed inquire at the bar hey kaz you know that fight i was knocked out for most of <laughs> yeah the one where we took out the minotaur yeah, yeah, yeah we don't need to get into the details you mm. didn't happen to keep like a souvenir or a memento or proof of any kind did you we'll say we didn't really like get a chance to like loot the minotaur so could you say the broken off horn in mortrick's stomach would have been a trophy sure okay yeah. so Kaz walks up to the nose and rips it off the page it with like the guy who just put it up there is like hey i'm we, putting that up we, here don't worry you, you won't need this notice anymore and uh you know i swear like regale him saunters up to the bar and says this is already taken care of there's a woman with a hairnet and she's got like silver chopsticks with a moon emblem a uh, half moon emblem in it uh and she's just she definitely seems like she could be the young woman's mother there's a strong family resemblance in both skin tone facial shape hair color and she's just like 
Oh, well, thank you very much, gentlemen. You've already completed this particular. Do you have proof of destruction? Uh, I grab Mortric and show her the wound that he received. And I'm going to pull up my shirt, but like, listen, check this out. Where's the line? I show my helmet where where the uh, you know where the axe blow struck. Yeah, you got some dents in there. Are you gonna hand over the horn? <laughs> uh, look, don't you want evidence of the that the Minotaur is dead rather than it? Yeah, like, she, she's she's like, yeah, yeah show evidence. me the evidence. <laughs> That's all we need. The horn, Kaz. Where did you put the horn? Uh, isn't it in your body? Isn't that what we just established? Oh no, he didn't leave that in there. He'll die. No, it's if not in there. there. He'll be dying. <laughs> okay. I don't want to get in there. Do you just have it in your pack and you pull it out? Yes. 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 She's okay. just like that was unnecessarily dramatic. I suspect that the one of you is a bard. <laughs> <laughs> you never guess which one. <laughs> I think I have a pretty good idea. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks. I am Eris Padua, and this is my Adventurers Guild. Eris, Hello, Eris. Padua? Padua, yes. Is your this is the lovely daughter... side of town, isn't it? We came in by the south side, and it wasn't nearly as... as... Oh, oh, you poor children. Do not worry, you are on Mother Padua's side now. Mm -hmm. I make sure everything runs good over here. Is that your daughter over there, being beguiled by that young man's uh, I allow her to make her own decisions and he seems like he is trustworthy and reliable mm, I have yet yeah, to discern that... his identity but uh, he oh, seems really? to have money and regular employment and bays that That's is important. that Bay is important we haven't been able to hey, do speaking that. of baths as you can see from my outfit I'm pretty filthy you wouldn't happen to have like like some spare clothes lying around would you i'll tell well, you what the bath. how, much how is about bath? baths for the two of you a mm, set yes. of adventuring clothes that will fit you quite nicely i have a good eye and oh. 45 gold for the horn is there a uh like looking at the clothes around does it seem like there is a particular outfit for the padua family there like, does not have... there's a lot of individual variation Okay. So just clean adventuring clothes is what I'm after. Exactly. Then. On her uh, chopsticks, she has like a... She has a crimson half, half moon. moon. Crimson half moon? Yep. Oh, okay. okay. Wait, is that different than the crimson stone breakers? The crimson stone breakers is the name of the mercenary unit that Duragar ran. Yeah. So there's, there's no relation. That's no relation. Okay. Unless there's a secret relation. There's not. Right. That we, d that we don't know about. Yeah. <laughs> Which there isn't, but we still don't know. Yeah, we still wouldn't know. <laughs> okay, well, we, I mean, I, okay, yeah. Kaz so, is definitely interested in this bath. Um, the horn's mine, so I'm going to hold on to that money. What? Kaz, do you no, want your we, you did not even, no, that's not happening. And and for the, who who put, took it out of their horn, their, their packet? She hands well, the 45 gold to Kazador yeah. uh, and hands you both wooden tokens and says, Head to the back room. The attendants will know. And how much was it for the baths? Uh, so she's deducting it from the amount oh, she's paying. Oh, she's just deducting it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Baths, clothing, and forty-five gold in exchange for quest completion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All right. So we go for a bath, I guess. Yeah. Separately. I mean, it is it is a attended bath. Like people show up to like scrub your back, uh, yeah. bring you scented oils, uh, nice perfumed soaps. But before we go up, I'm going to tell Kaz, like, I don't think one of us needs to be here to keep an eye on this guy. So who wants to bath first? Great. I'll do it. You stay here. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Kaz is dumbfounded. Kaz, <laughs> you, you get, you, I mean, Mortrick moves as fast as he talks. So yeah. yeah. Uh, what's your plan? Line. You're, you're left with, uh, a fresh set of clothing that is particularly sized to you. Some she she must have sized it through your armor. Perhaps yeah. a magical ability, or maybe it's the power of being a mom. Uh, but she picked out a pretty powerful. nice cut for you. Uh, She's got the right size cod piece and everything. <laughs> well, no, no cod change. piece, but it's it's like no no. She doesn't expect you to change until you take the bath. But yeah. it's like 
nicely subdued grays with kind of a texture going on. Silk, well fitting, good mm. pants, belts. Yeah, Kaz definitely safely tucks that away and puts it into his pack and saves it for what might be a day where he actually needs it. Okay. All right. Yeah. What's what's your plan here? You've been left with the bills, so to speak. Well, with the money, but with the bill, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, he could abscond away from Mortric, leaving him to his path. Uh, no, I mean uh, he's going to take in the measure of of this. Um, he's going to he's going to watch as he converses, as, as like the the sun converses with Padua. All right, I need you to make two skill checks. All right, stealth to see how close you can get, and then perception to see what you hear. Okay, I'm at a disadvantage with stealth, so... Uh, yes. All right, look. It's not great. Uh, you're at a disadvantage because you are wearing plate armor. Plate armor. And you begin to move closer and closer. <laughs> Everyone in the bar is tracking your position. I mean... Even at 11? Yeah, okay. I mean, a 10 would be to beat average. This is a... This is a room full of adventurers. They're used to watching for any danger at all at a moment's notice, and you're a giant gleaming piece of metal. <laughs> yeah. hey, that's fair. Um, Wait, can I ask a question? Yep. Because this is more about the thing. Because I, I know, um, I know what Casador is talking about. The the wait the disadvantage. Yes, he's yes. at disadvantage to dexterity checks when he is in Wearing plate plate, plate mail. Oh, it's not just a, a negative application. Okay. No. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. I put that and I put that into the um to the thing. Okay. For some reason I was thinking it was just a negative number, not advantage. But you you said advantage and okay. So the two of them the two yeah, gotcha. young lovers have noticed your approach. Okay. And what was the second check you wanted to Perception do? to see what Perception. you get out of it. Because now they're whispering now. Okay. You know what? You you creep a little closer. You like you you get in that corner of the room. You find that nice place where it's bouncing off of a wall, and it's like you're right there in their ears, listening to every word. Let me tell you something, Kaz. Uh, how familiar is Kazador with human poetry, specifically romantic poetry? Not at all. I'm talking Absolutely. like the sappiest shit. It's like pure honey in your ear. Yeah, uh, but he, you him, want like, to just, vomit. You know, he sort of doesn't really get analogies there there are no analogies here they are <gasps> these two are direct people okay. they're talking about what they want to do with their lives and it involves some pretty explicit sexual acts okay so this is a this there's is a, a lot of i want to tear your clothes off right now this is yeah. two this is two kids sexting with no reservation right <laughs> <laughs> Okay. He becomes um, a human space heater as he blushes inside the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> he, he puts the helmet on and two little blush marks appear on it. He <laughs> starts rolling out of it. Super hot anime. Yeah. <laughs> Could change it. Have you hot into the color then, I guess. Um, yeah, okay. Then, I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm, I'm waiting there. Then that's what I observe there. And I'm going to take in the fact that you know that their love isn't necessarily all that deep you know it's sort of maybe surface level at least as far as he can take it that's a, i mean that's a conclusion you were drawing i don't know how that. true that is yeah yeah i don't know i don't know that's what he's gonna that's what kaz is gonna walk away from with okay all right mm -hmm. uh you tag in with Mortric at some point all right he's gonna take his bath Mortric. um uh what's your plan here um just like trying to get more information I mean, I know what I heard earlier. I know what the coin told me. But I really like that old lady. Um, if I can't get anything new out of the kids, I'm going to go talk to the mom some more. Well, you don't know. You haven't tried getting anything new out of the kids. You haven't even talked to the kids yet. Yep. Yeah. I was going to leave that to you. Okay. Oh, so you're like, are you telling me you want me to talk to the kids? I'm just saying. I'm saying. I told. I told you what I observed, and I okay. said, I "Leave it in okay. your hands. Yeah. What you, where you want to take it from there." Even though that's not a good idea, but that's what I did. <laughs> All right. Okay. When I tag in with Kaz, I'm going to go to the bar, get a drink, and then saunter over to where the two of them are at. So you are not attempting to hide your approach at all. 
No. You are just going to straight up walk over and like, interrupt a conversation. Yeah, like, are they, like, on, like, what is the situation So around? they're in a corner of the, the bar. As you're approaching, someone stands up smoothly and moves in your way uh, and puts a hand on your chest, and it's just like, no, 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 no. You don't interrupt them. No, can I talk This person to is the most stereotypical rogue you've ever seen. Pure <laughs> black clothing, everything is loose, uh, tied tightly with a sash at the belt. You're pretty sure you can see a hand crossbow holster under the shoulder, uh, knives. They've got a black uh, Zorro mask on. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, are you, are you guys a team? You and you and the kid. Yes, the young woman is under my protection. Oh, the young woman! No, 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 no! I want to talk to the gentleman over there. I'm, I'm putting. Do you together even know who that is? No, no, listen. Like I'm putting together a team. I got something lined up. It's kind of hush hush, and like you can out, speak. Looking, looking for local talent. He looks like someone who knows what his business is about. So I just, I just like a word with him. Is all. You can speak with him when he goes to leave. Do you know, do you have any any idea? I if mean, you like, interfere with my lady, I am going to break nope, parts nope, of your body interested. that interested. you will regret. Lady, she seems pretty smitten. Are they pretty happy? They look like a good couple to me. He's been coming around for the last few weeks. At first, I was very suspicious of him. But now I am still very suspicious of him. <laughs> hmm. Well, I mean, that's not like a start, like... So, okay, so can I ask you? You've known him for a couple of weeks. I'm very suspicious of you, too. Well, you know, that's to be fair. We just met. You've known him, of him, for a couple of weeks. Like, does he come in? Does he complete a lot? I saw your board over there with the quest. Does he complete a lot of jobs? Like, He's turned in one or two, mostly involving clearing out obvious criminals from the south side of town. It seems like he specializes in hunting down the guilty. Mm -hmm. So he's not in it for like the bigger game kind of items, like right? We just I have not seen table. him work with a party or organization yet. Mm -hmm. Why don't you come sit down with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I got I got time to kill anyway. Please allow me to introduce myself. I am Sir Harris Napoli, known mm -hmm. around these parts as the Shadow Knight. Ooh, that is catchy. I like it. I am Morgan Etrick Haddlespar. I do not yet, I've not yet earned my heroic sobriquet, but yours is very nice, my friend. Thank you. I have worked very hard to have it. Sometimes, when you fight evil, you must become somewhat, but in a very legally distinct way, like <laughs> evil. <laughs> I can appreciate your grasp of subtlety. Indeed. I've been uh, working in this business for some time, working to guard the young woman. I consider her like a younger sister to me. Oh, that's nice. I'm sure she is plenty safe then. Indeed, she will be more safe when our marriage goes through. You and her? Really? I have been in discussions with her mother. Well, and... congratulations. Can I buy you a round? Uh, I do not drink. I understand. You're on duty. You're on duty. No, I just don't drink in general. Oh, well, okay. You know, I that feel it indicates a weakness of the mind. Ooh, I had not thought of it in those... It is literally or... imbibing a deadly poison. I mean, mostly I'm just cheap, like super cheap. I don't, yeah. Yes, I, mean, I like, understand that of you. Yeah, yeah. It is very no, I like your approach too. Cazador, when you come out of the baths, uh, the attendants help you during the five minutes it takes to armor yourself back up. <laughs> like they have to get you out of the tin can and back into it. Cazador uh, yeah. is talking to some Zorro ass motherfucker. <laughs> Um, in the corner you can clearly hear the young man going my love for you blooms like the night blossom on the jade islands I swallow a little bit of puke as he's <laughs> to that for a little while and he's just a little bit sick of it um, and I join up with Mortred we cut quickly over to Runa and uh, Richax the two you've been waiting 
It's been like 30 minutes and this kid isn't here. You're I'm just sure you're just standing in an alleyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not cold, but it is cool and there is a night mist coming off of the the sea. Bruno, you seem very placid. Fun. This has to be Mortrick's fault. <laughs> <laughs> we know he's a long talker. <laughs> we cut back to Mortrick talking. <laughs> Kaz, do you sit down with Sir Harris? Yes. Uh, oh, Sir Harris? Um, hey, hello, Sir Harris. You know, the like bench you creaks as you sit down. <laughs> Let me introduce my friend Casador. Casador, this is Sir Harris, the Shadow Knight. Uh, bodyguard. Are you. Casador White Knuckle. Yes, I have heard of you. He is. is you so? have? We just we did just uh, take care of your Minotaur problem. No, 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 no. Hmm. You are the one that fights in the deep tunnels. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I once did you. many years ago. Yes, yes, yes. I don't really talk about that. I have an excellent memory. I have heard of all of the heroes and their names that have passed through this place. There are tales that have been sung of you. It has been some time, it's true. Is Sir Harris a human? Yes. I mean, okay. as far as you can tell with the Zorro mask and the yeah, full no body covering black clothing. Yeah. Okay. Um, just checking. Well, Sir Harris, I, I, um, I have not quite heard as much as about you. I'm curious what, uh, what kind that of That is because I am the Shadow Knight. He's the Shadow Knight, Kaz. No one, uh, one does not sing the praises of the Shadow Knight. One simply sees the instrument of their use. That makes sense. The okay. first rule of the Shadow Knight is you don't talk about the Shadow Knight. So did I hear that you were to be engaged by, to Padua? Ah, yes, you have heard of that. I am courting Delia Padua. This young man here might be worthy of being a, uh, how do you say, boy toy? Have you heard of the things they talk of? <laughs> yes, I have. I, we are literally sitting two tables away. They are very explicit. But you are not a jealous man, I take it. She will be married to me and not him. Hmm. That is a very mature attitude. Well, thank you. I am a very direct and... Uh, well, direct is mostly just it. Except when it comes to... Your blade, I take it. No, my blade is extremely direct. <laughs> but but under the cloak of... Anyway. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, look, sometimes when people slash, they wave their swords around, just looking to get any injury. When I strike, it is always precise, hitting exactly where I mean to. Internal organs, useful joints. I what disable kind of my enemy. Have? Uh, so he's openly wearing a series of daggers and short short knives. Yeah. Yeah. But like, it is quite the arsenal you have, my friend. The thing is, sometimes you lose a weapon in combat. Foolish people only carry one or two weapons. You usually need like eight or nine in order to get through a knight, I feel like. In a knight? Oh yeah, of course. You know, you got to throw some occasionally. Sometimes they get knocked out of your hand. You don't have time to go pick those up. You draw a new one and you keep stabbing. That is a good point. Mostly I just get stabbed until I pass out and then I'll let someone else finish the fight. That is I've probably why you are bad at your job. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty new to it still. Look, it's not the line of work I thought I would be in. So, so again, this person is wearing head to toe black, <laughs> including a Zorro face mask. Like, puts their hand on, on the counter, almost like a business partner talking to you. They're like, look, let me give you some advice. If you want to get a fancy title, you need to stop letting other people do the work and do it yourself. Yes. Stop dying. <laughs> Look at this man. He is in full plate armor. Why are you not hiding directly behind him? <laughs> you know, you poke out from the side, you go, ha, you stab, and then you move behind him again. <laughs> you know, not that is saying. definitely it's something we're going to need to work on moving forward. You know, you could, get the, you could get a very long weapon and stab from around <laughs> him. Ha, ha, hoo, ha. <laughs> I've seen people pull this off successfully. And if what I've heard of him in the shield tunnels is true... He is excellent at holding the line. He is very good. Once, once we convinced him to stand out in front, things started going much better for our little group. 
Oh, so you all are part of a group? I thought you were like a duet. Well, you know, that mistake has been made before, and I put my hand on Kaz's arm. You know, the jury's still out on that. But oh, okay. No judgment job, here. <laughs> the job we're putting together, you know, kind of requires more hands, which is why I wound up here and why I was curious about that. You can that find yet. several adventurers looking for parties here. They are yeah, LFP. Like, have you seen that guy? He is a giant. He looks like he'd be really good. Perhaps, perhaps. Why don't you tell my friend Kaz what you uh, what you told me about him? Well, I want to tell you about instead. Someone has spotted an ogre in this southern city. If you are looking for an adventuring party, if you could tame the beast and get it on your side, that would be excellent. That partner. is, that would be something. And I am a very winning person. I don't believe that's true. Well. Let's give it time. Give it time. Our relationship hasn't progressed very far. I have given it some time. The more that I hear about you, the less I am convinced that you are a good person. <laughs> Fortunately, Sir Casimir. Wait, you've heard right about here. me too? No, you told me your name was Mortric Eagle Hattelspar. And since yeah. then, I have heard nothing but vomitous bullshit from your mouth. <laughs> uh, oh, shit. Great. What the hell happened with these colors? Mr. Sunset over here. Yeah, this is uh, like an effect type thing. Sort of like drop that in, sort of. Yeah. yeah. Nice. It's the quick way to do some stuff with fancy photo with the colors. So the two kids look like they're wrapping up their conversation. Mm -hmm. Mostly it's been him throwing down the lines, but at the end, she like grabs him by his lapels and pulls him close. And from the way he's heating up, she probably just said some shit that's real filthy, considering what they've been discussing so far. He stands up. If this was an anime, there would be little flowers coming off of him. They'd be like, bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> he is fucking flying high as he makes for the exit, which means he'll be moving directly past you. Uh, so like Sir Harris is just like, if you would like to speak with the young woman now, I will yeah. allow it. Sir Harris, it's been great meeting and talk with you, talking with you. It's technically Sir Napoli, but I will allow you Sir to Napoli. call me Harris. I'm so sorry. The Shadow Knight. You can call me Harris. All right, Harris. Can what I call you the happen? Shadow Knight? That you can call like... me the Shadow Knight. I'll call you the Shadow Knight. Good night. Uh, so what's the plan here? I mean, your target is leaving. Yeah, yeah so I'm going to try and catch up. What does it look like she's doing? She is sitting at the bench and sighing and playing with her drink. I do okay. think we need to get back to Runa and, and Ripjax as soon as possible. I think they're going to be getting impatient. And we don't know what they're going to do with that impatience. All right. I'm going to stay with him. You head back to Runa and Ripjax. All right. Well, so no one's going to talk to Padua. Maybe I'll be following him. And you talk to Padua? Or... No, yes. I mean, we don't want to... You're so do stealthy, right. you should definitely follow them. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, you head back to Runa and Rick Jacks. I'll stick with them. Did you see the Shadow Knight? I don't think we can get to Padua. That true. dude is legit. All right. She, she so that, here's the that. thing, Cazador. You start jogging to head back <laughs> to, to where Runa and... Uh, Rick Jacks have set up, and you move directly past this guy. Uh, I mean, he is heading in the exact direction you are. He, like, waves at you as you go past. He's like, hey, how's it going? Good night. I need you to make a perception check, Mr. Mortrick. Per Are you ready for my last one of the night? Yeah, this is going to be the last roll of the night. Damn. Uh... There's a whistle in the night. You're not really sure what goes down. Kazdor... I want you to make a perception check at disadvantage. Wow, still managed to get an 11. All right, so as you're leaving the range, you hear the whistle and you kind of uh, notice a few men moving towards the the young man as you like round the corner. There, okay. there seems to be like people gathering up around him. And do they look like... Um, they look like know. they belong on the south side of the river. Right, okay. So he takes note of them. He sh he he points them out to uh, and, Mortric. And you're gone. Oh no, Mortric! Mortric's so distracted right now. Yeah, I've got no idea. <laughs> He's looking up. 
the, there's a beautiful crescent strawberry to moon to tonight. He's reminiscing about the shadow night. Like, did you yes. see how cool he was? Yeah, <laughs> I want to be like that one day. Yeah, no, like I'm trying to catch up to the kids so I can talk to him. Well, okay, that then, is that possibly case. where we'll pick up next time. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, congratulations, you all have earned 200 XP this session. Woo! How yeah. is now level one? Oh God. <laughs> Poor Hal. <laughs> what class is he? Uh, I haven't picked yet, but it's probably going to be something like rogue because well, rogues aren't get... strictly people that murder. They are very expert at doing multiple tasks. Two hundred. Uh, two hundred. Yeah, two hundred. Yeah, so six sixty one guys, right? Yeah. And we need nine hundred for next level, right? That is correct. Yeah, so we're gonna have to take out some fools next next round. Take out. You some don't have fools. to kill everything, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only sparingly, Kaz. Jesus, we just gotta kill the right things. Yeah. Okay. Why yeah. do you just want to murder everyone and everything? It's so. <laughs> Look, Shaq called it out. We're murder hobos. <laughs> Look, <laughs> you're the one that stabbed a guy in cold blood. Because he was gonna stab us. He wasn't gonna stab anybody. He would have. He could have joined in the fight against the, the Minotaur. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> what's done is done. God, we're murder hobos. <laughs> oh, yeah, we totally are. Well, at least one of us is. <laughs> but I Not can, it. I can only ever murder people after they're already knocked out. <laughs> when they're not in a freaking attack stance. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I get all my kills. <laughs> Why work for it when you can let other people do the work for you? That is, is the mortric way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it's definitely not how you get a title, but that is how you get the job done. Touche. Uh, at least if you're more trick. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't say he's gotten a lot of jobs done so far, although technically he <laughs> has intimidated an unusually high number of people. <laughs> I mean, you'd think my charisma bonus would start to help me somewhere. Uh, well, you, you have to be good at rolling in order to succeed at this game. So you know Yeah, and like with the algorithm, that's not going to happen. My typing is fine. It's the algorithm. <laughs> I don't know. I think the algorithm's been pretty good for, to me. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> It's been yeah. a good night for Runa as well. It's not been totally terrible. It's been okay. I rolled one natural 20. Yeah, you know how it goes. Yeah. Uh... Man, you know, Rick Jacks, I really thought you'd be more involved in the criminal side, but you're so moral. I'm very <laughs> interested in this. Well, I mean, Gnomes, you tell me. We can talk about it because... No, he's no, no. Look, I made some presuppositions when you were like, I am a rogue criminal. And Possibly I was like, all right, it's crime week. No, it's no. no. <laughs> I it's don't, not what that's... about gnomes are. It's about how you want to play your gnome. Right. Yeah. It's not yeah. about his type. It's about his class. Yeah. Being classist. I'm also using what, what you told me when you uh, went into this. You're into the investigation side. You're into the backstory. You're into the, you know, the nitty gritty and mostly the combat side. Look. And I like to do quick missions. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one, I don't know yeah, how so quick much. this one's going down. At first, it was going down fast. Now it's. It's getting increasingly complicated. Slow burn. Is, look, <laughs> yeah. Do any of you know what TV tropes is? Yeah, love to do TV tropes. Yeah, well, Mortric is playing Xanathos Gambit Relay. He is. <laughs> he's coming up with plan after plan at high speed, spewing them out. <laughs> you got to stay adaptable. You don't know. You know. You got to be able to be able to change at a moment's notice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly him. <laughs> Love it. You're you're the perfect bard, Mick. That's uh no doubt there. I mean he's the perfect something. <laughs> this oh, is right. looking awesome, Connor. Yeah, that looks yeah, fantastic. That's some beautiful ass art. I love how those reds just pop out. I want to point out that there's more art of Rick Jacks than any other character by like <laughs> a huge amount. A character. Yeah, everybody's in love with this guy. Yeah. Ah, see, Mortric, more you don't need to be the biggest, flashiest talker in order to be the most popular. <laughs> yeah, so true. So true. Let's uh, 
kind of feel like I'm locking in the exact opposite position. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about outros. I'm, of course, as I always remain to be, Arthur Perkins, and this will continue to be AP Gaming Real, probably. I mean, I can't predict the future, but... Uh, you know, I'm here all week. I have shows every single day this week, and then for the four days next week, it's 11 days of streaming in a row. Uh, wow. For, so, for some of you that stream regularly, that must not sound very big, but that's four hours a day, 11 days in a row, which is pretty big for me. Uh, we're just on the start of the path. By the end of it, I'm sure I'll be exhausted, and Friday I'll be like, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, it can be tiring. Yeah, are we sure. Are we good for next week? Everybody can check in, say yes. Yep. Yeah. Bearded? I'm good. All right, excellent. We got everybody here next week. Speaking of bearded, let's do your outro. Yeah, you can find me at the social medias, the Instagram, the Twitter, the Twitch. Uh, I don't stream too regularly right now, but you can catch me on those other social medias at Bearded Jalapeno. And uh, if you got any commission ideas, definitely send them my way. Um, yeah. And you may or may not be drawing next week. Yeah. Yeah, depending on. I'll be drawing. We'll, we'll make it work. Yeah, okay. Let's let's put those positive vibes out there. <laughs> oh, because of the computer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just put the new motherboard in. I'm just waiting on another part. Okay. I see. see. Who do you want to toss the outros to? Let's go with Planet Chaos this time. <laughs> All right. So I'm Planet Chaos. Um, I'm twitching less and less lately because I have to do real life work. So the best place to see my work is Instagram where I'm planet chaos underscore art and chaos is with the K. And, uh, my whole thing is drawing, you know, D and D monsters and characters and whatnot like that. And I'll kick it over to Mick. I'm Mick Comiker and I'm on Instagram, Twitch, and Twitter as Mick Comaker, M C C O M I C K E R. And I think you've heard me talking up tonight. So, Connor, what do you have to say? <laughs> All right, guys, my name is Connor Hughes. Uh, I twit I'm on Twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash Connor Hughes, uh, C O N O R H U G H E S. I'm um, going to try and be pretty regular. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, been streaming yesterday and today. We've been doing uh, wallpaper, which I have uh, here for um, a comic called White Ash. And it's uh, one of the rewards for our Kickstarter. Um, so yeah, you can find me there um, and hit me up on that. And my website is cnrhus.com. And if you want to just see my work. And uh, thank you very much. Thanks, for, thanks, AP. That was great. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Arthur. Is that is that everybody? We've done everybody's outros? Yep. All right. Then uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, have a good night. Take care. Peace. All right.